Hi everybody, welcome back to The Bindery. Thanks for joining me. Today I want to talk to you about what you can do with old books. Specifically, how you can recycle and reclaim materials from old books and use them for your crafts and bookbinding projects. Now, I know what a lot of you may be thinking. You can't destroy old books. And in principle, I agree with you. I think that the best place for a book is to give it to someone who will actually read and enjoy it. But the reality is, is that many books are just cast aside, they get recycled, or even thrown in the trash. And it's an unnecessary waste, and there's lots of ways that we can reuse them. Large size books like these ones contain a whole bunch of materials that we can reclaim, including the book board, decorative papers, even end bands, sometimes book cloth. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to break down a book like this, and then I'll show you some of the things that we can do to reuse those materials, including making a piercing cradle like this one and I'll show you how to make that. A few words of caution before we begin. Always check the value of your books before you attempt this. And that may be the monetary value, or it could be educational value or historic interest. Just make sure that you're making the right decision to take it apart. Now I have here some textbooks from old curricula, an old coffee table book, and I know that these ones are of no real value. Now where can you find books like these? There's lots of sources. The first and best place to look is your own home. You may have old textbooks, old coffee table books, old sets of encyclopedias. There's a wealth of material that's just waiting on your own bookshelf. Other places to look could be old library sales, thrift stores, yard sales. Trust me, if you start looking, you're going to find that there are plenty of unwanted books out there in the world. So let's take a look at the books that I have here. I've got a couple of old high school textbooks that are about 15 years out of date. The covers are solid book board. And here I have a coffee table style book. This one's got, it's either a book cloth or a cloth textured paper on the cover. And it has lots of great photos on the inside. And I think I'll try and reuse quite a few of these. So the parts of the book that we can reclaim are obviously the covers, the decorative papers that you may find inside. Other parts of the books, like an index for example, can be used just as simple waste paper, which we use quite a lot of in bookbinding. And often you can even reclaim the headbands and put those onto a new book. I quite like this one. It's a large format. It's got lots of neat paper in it. So I'm going to work on this one. So let's get started. I'll show you how to break this down and reclaim as much as you can from it. As far as which tools you'll need to do this, it's really a minimum. You will need a knife. I like to use a bone folder. I'll show you what that's used for. And a ruler can be handy. But there's really not much more than that. So to start, we'll separate the cover from the text block. We're going to open the book up, and using our blade, we're just going to cut along the inside of the hinge. And we don't have to be too terribly careful about this, unless you are really trying to conserve these end papers. But in most cases, the paste down paper is not going to be recoverable. And we should be able to just break that away. It's not cooperating. so. In this case, I'm just going to cut the cover clean off. There, that's better. Here's our first decorative paper that we can keep. And I'll do the same thing with the back cover. And here we can see the way the book is constructed. The end band. I should be able to just pull away with my fingers. And there's the other one. And again, we're not trying to conserve anything here. We're just trying to reclaim the materials. So now I'll use my ruler and knife, and I'm just going to cut away the spine. I'm just going to take a little bit of time to go through and take out those pages with the most decorative images and I'll save those to reuse. So 
So there we have our raw materials broken down. We've got a nice stack of decorative papers, quite a lot of waste paper, two good size book boards, and of course two little end bands that we can put onto another book. Next I'll show you how to break down the covers even further so we can take them back just to plain gray board. The results you can get when doing this can be mixed. It really depends on the quality of the binding that the original book had. If they used really high quality adhesives, it can be really tricky to get these papers off. But in some cases you don't even need to. In fact, I'm going to save one of these to make our piercing cradle just as is. I'm not going to take the covers off at all. When doing this, it helps to understand a little bit how a cover is put together. The cloth on the front would have been put on first, and then it would have been turned in around the edges, resulting in little pleats or foldovers on the corners. Those are going to be helpful for us when we're taking it apart. After that, the decorative paste down would have been glued down, and so we're going to try and lift that off as well. The weak points on the cover are going to be right at the top and bottom corner where we cut it away from the spine and we can get in underneath the papers on the inside there as well as the turn ins. The turn in has a little pleat that we can get our bone folder underneath and start prying up the covering material. So here I'm going to begin just where we cut away the tail of the book from the spine. I'm going to take my bone folder and I'm going to try and push it in underneath the cloth and pry it up a little bit. I don't know what kind of results I'm going to get here, but I'll give it a good go. Then I push it in straight underneath the turn in, and it's going to start pulling up both the end paper and the cloth. I'm just going to drive that in straight. It's coming away fairly well. We can see the gray board underneath. I'm going to do that all the way along the tail. You can do the same thing at the turn in up here. Just start lifting that away. And that's coming away really easily. So now we can see those turn ins. And with our bone folder, we can just get in and try and work that out. Again, I'll go in from the spine. And now with the bone folder inserted underneath the paste down, I'll start working it sideways. And that very flat angle is going to pull the paste down away from the gray board. It takes a little bit of strength. Just take your time. We'll just continue working our way around the perimeter. This is coming away really nicely. By placing the bone folder flat and using my fingertips, I can push it up underneath the paper now that, oh, that's come away really easily. that's all the way off. We'll flip it over and it's a, effectively it's the same thing on the other side. Try and avoid just pulling and ripping it off because that's going to create uneven pressure. I like to use the bone folder, the long edge of it, to push along underneath the covering material.
There, we've got almost perfect removal. And this material, which is... It's actually just paper. But that's come away cleanly enough that we could even reuse that. Any extra that's left, you can just come in from the other direction. Now this came away extremely well. This is actually not typical. Often I find that the adhesive is very strong and you'll get some tear away like this across the entire surface. That doesn't mean it's unusable, it's just there's a little bit more work to cover it up depending on your use for it. So let's get started on making the piercing cradle. Some handy tools to have include a cutting mat, if you're not a barbarian like me who cuts right onto his workbench, a sturdy knife, a pencil, and a metal ruler as a cutting guide. For materials, obviously you're going to need your book cover and some sort of a backing material. You're going to need a thin strip that's a couple of inches wide. You can use book cloth. You can even use something like duct tape or gaffer's tape. If it's fabric reinforced, it's better. Or in this case, I'm actually going to use this recycled heavy paper that I took off the other cover of the book. So for our piercing cradle, we're going to need four pieces. There's enough in this one cover to make everything. We're going to need two long strips and then two shorter narrow pieces. I'm going to cut two pieces that are nine centimeters wide. And then I'll divide this narrower piece Next I'm going to cut a piece of my reinforcing paper. I'll just cut a strip six centimeters wide and the same length as the boards. The next step is going to be to join these two boards together so that they can sit in a V shape. I'm actually going to work on the black side. Now, if you're using some sort of a reinforcing tape, you can just apply that directly over these two pieces. But since I'm using my reclaimed cloth, I'm going to use some PVA glue. And here's where our waste paper is coming in handy already. I can lay that down and apply the glue on my backing strip. So with our two pieces placed snugly together, and again with the inner part of your V facing up. We're going to take our backing paper or cloth or tape and we're going to apply it right over the center of that line. We can take our bone folder from earlier and give that a good press down. Clean up any squeeze out. And then if you can, you can put that under a weight for a little while to let the glue dry. I just so happen to have some heavy books here. Once that's dry, you'll have a nicely hinged surface for your piercing cradle. The distance between the support legs is going to depend both upon the size of your board, but also the size of the papers that you're going to be piercing. You should make sure that you have at least enough space between the two supports to accommodate the largest of the papers that you're going to be sewing into a book. Just so we can see things better, I'm going to work on this side. So I've got a signature of paper here. I'll just center that and I'll make a mark that's just outside of that so that I have ample room. And then using the thickness of our end pieces, I'll mark the width of our cutouts. It helps if you keep these snug so that the leg supports don't fall out when you pick the piercing cradle up. Now we can mark out where we want our cutouts to be. 
I'll just use a ruler. And I'll measure up a little bit more than halfway across this board, which in this case is five centimeters. This next operation is probably the most difficult of the project. It's important to have a sharp blade. And just take your time. Don't apply too much pressure, just make multiple light passes and do be careful of your fingers. It does help at the beginning of the cut to make a stab downward. And don't worry about cutting into the other side of the board because we're going to be extending this onto the other one as well. And finally, to release that piece that we've cut away, a couple of stab cuts downward from either side. Next, what I'm going to do is just fold this in half. And then using the cutout that I've already made, I'll use that as a guide to cut through the other portion. repeat that at the other end. So with those slits cut, we can now test the fit. Our end pieces just slide up on the inside. And the last decision is to decide what angle you want your piercing cradle to lay open. You could have it at a very flat angle or something a little steeper. When you find an angle that you're happy with, try and center your support legs. And then with your pencil on the inside, just make a mark on each support leg. So where we've made those marks, we're just going to cut away a small portion on either side that's going to help to support the cradle. I'm just going to freehand these cuts. They're not critical. Now for final assembly, it's a simple matter of opening the cradle and placing each support leg up through the slit we made, and then just pinch it closed lightly. There we have it. Now when we press down on it, if we're piercing some paper, it won't close up on us and it's fairly sturdy. Now let's go ahead and make something with our new cradle and some of our reclaimed materials. I've chosen this photo from the book. I think it'll make a really neat cover for a small pocket notebook. As it is, it's not really thick enough to make a cover. And it has this map on the inside, which may be interesting, but I think I'd rather just have a plain white inside for the pocket notebook. And so what I'll do is I'm going to attach it to a piece of heavier cardstock. To do that, I'm going to use a spray adhesive. Spray adhesive, I find, helps to reduce any sort of bending and wrinkling in the cover. You can use any type of good quality spray adhesive. 
I'm just going to do that off camera outside because of the fumes. All right, I don't know if you can see the texture of the adhesive on there now. I'm going to move quickly and attach these. I'm just going to lay this straight down on top. And then using a piece of parchment paper over top so I don't scratch the image and a bone folder, I'll make sure everything is well adhered. Next I'll trim the cover to size. Now I'm going to flip the cover over and find the center line. I'm going to use my bone folder to score it, which will help it crease along the outside edge. I'm not going to fold it over yet. I'm going to wait until I have the paper and I'll fold everything together and that will hopefully prevent any cracking along the outside. For the paper for the notebook, I'm just using a standard 20 pound copier paper. I'm just going to trim that to the size of the pocket notebook. I'm going to fold up some of these pages first. And just fold them all together. And then I'll fold the cover around those. So now we'll put our punching cradle to use. I'll just open up the booklet to its center. Then I'm going to use a sharp awl to pierce the holes. I'm just going to do a simple pamphlet binding. I'm going to make five holes. And I just start in the center. And I'm going to push firmly down through all the layers of paper. And it's actually going to come all the way through the bottom of the piercing cradle. I'm not going to measure these, I'm just going to pop the holes through at either end and in the center. And that'll be the basis for our simple pamphlet binding. Now for a simple pamphlet binding like this, the sewing is going to be exposed, so I'm going to use the complementary colored wax thread that I have, a generous twice the length of the book. So the pamphlet, I'm going to start on the outside at the center hole. And then down through this next hole. being sure to leave the tail end poking out back here. And in at the head. Then I'm going to skip the center hole and go to the next one along.
and the last stitch goes out through the center hole where we came in. And then I'll just tie it off with a square knot. Now this could benefit from being put under a weight or into a book press overnight and that will compress the fibers along the spine and prevent it from springing up. But right now we can move right on to trimming the book. In this case having some sort of a square to make sure that you're cutting at 90 degrees to the spine is helpful but not entirely necessary. And lastly, we'll trim the foredge. And as a last finishing touch, I like to round the corners on my books. So thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and that you'll look at old books in a whole new light. If you have any other ideas of what we might be able to do with some of these materials, or if you have other ways of reusing old books, please let me know in the comments. I always read them and try to respond to all of them. So until next time, thanks for watching and we'll see you again.